Hi, welcome to another episode of E-Bike Insights from the Electric Bike Company. Yes, so uh, we've been asked here, uh, why do lithium ions uh, batteries uh, lose charge? Well, there's quite a few um, points to that, and I'm just going to kind of just briefly go over them. You can actually look online and there's all kinds of specifics sort of about, you know, 10, 15 reasons. But the main reason we find that your battery will lose charge over time is really the quality of the cell. Now, a battery cell, as we said in our previous videos, is actually called an 18650. So that's a typical size of the cell. And the 18650 just means 18 millimeters wide and 65 millimeters long. And that's a typical cell that's used industry-wide. There's a new cell that's come out. It's a 2170, 21 millimeters wide and 70 millimeters long. But a typical cell, which is a 99% of all electric bikes at the moment, is a... Uh, you know, you get you really the top three uh, manufacturers are Samsung, Panasonic, and LG. And we we at the Electric Bike Company don't use any other make. Uh, we feel that the, the the make of the cell is critical to the longevity and the uh, the fact that your battery uh, keeps charge and and keeps the charge over time. And why is that? Why are these batteries so? you know, so much better than the rest. And of course, it comes down to the quality of the ingredients that they use and, the, and the, obviously the, the parts and the, uh, and the chemistry that they use. And really, it's, a, uh, it's the anode and the cathode and then the electrolyte that is used in the battery and then, of course, the, the assembly of the battery cell. And Samsung, Panasonic and LG, humongous, you know, battery uh, manufacturers, of course, have that really, you know, dialed in. So always, if you're looking for a battery besides one of ours, just make sure that you know what the, the battery pack, what the actual battery cells are like inside your battery pack. Now, not only does a battery cell need to be uh, of high quality, but there's lots of other additional uh, parts in the battery pack that are actually can affect the, uh, the longevity of your battery. And I just brought this out because this is one thing that actually connects you can connect your one battery to the next battery. You can either use a wire bonding process where it's just a wire is bonded to the, uh, the battery is bonded to the next battery by a wire bonding, which is really good. And again, 99% of people use nickel plating. So the nickel plating comes in a sort of a roll like this. And it's, you know, you just connect the one battery cell to the next battery with your nickel plating. Well, nickel is actually, you know, when, when you ask your supplier, listen, do you use nickel plating? They might say yes, but you've got to be really careful. Is it pure nickel or is it, you know, 90% nickel, 80%? And that all can affect the quality of your battery. This, this one, for instance, as you can see, this has got rust on. So nickel doesn't rust. So there's clearly a little bit of other, you know, alloys in here and that's causing it to rust. So this is not pure nickel, and that's the reason why it's just a, you know, we're not using this piece. So, uh, so, not a, so, so, the, so the battery cell, the nickel plating is really important, and also how, in, how your battery cell and the nickel plating is, is connected. That can make a, a, a big um, impact on the quality and, the, and you know, if your battery is going to lose charge over time. The other thing, of course, is wiring. Now, I just bought a piece of wire with us, but wiring you know, it so varies on what type of wires, what gauge wire, how the wires connected, how the wires are are uh, insulated. Now, if you are not checking that, you know, typically if you're getting an outside supplier doing that, they can initially have it that it's all correct, but over time again, that can sort of, the quality and the standards go down. We had an example, we had a battery pack sent to us, and this is a battery pack from one of our suppliers, and we noticed that, you know, the battery cell was a different color to the actual standard uh, Samsung s cells. And we thought, well, maybe that's a Panasonic cell. But when we went further and investigated, that was actually a local Chinese manufactured cell. So the battery pack looks all good, but the cells are not good. So what's important is, is to take the battery pack apart and to just periodically check your battery packs and look inside and see, is the battery cell good? Is the nickel actually nic pure nickel? Are the wiring connections correct? Are the, is the insulation done correctly? Are the plugs the right specifications? Are they water resistant and waterproofed if you need to? And 
the other the other really important thing, and I brought a sort of a little prop with me, is the BMS, is the battery management system. So the battery management system, again, is like red wine or perfume or anything like that. You get good ones and you get really bad ones. So you can't just ask, does my battery pack have a BMS in it, a battery management system? But does it? Um, what quality is that? So BMS is typically looks, it's just a bit of circuitry. And, and, and what it's doing, of course, is it's balancing your battery out. So some people call it a battery management system. Some, call, some people call it a, a, a balancing management system. And then, of course, the other thing is that the, the, in, in, your, in your BMS, the circuitry is critical, but you can have certain functions as well. You can have a sleep mode, for instance, where if the master switch is not switched off, the, the bike is idle or your battery is idle for a while, then the sleep mode will kick in and then there will be no draw out of your battery. You can also you, you can have all the you can have an alarm system on there that if it's over overheating you know the, it can set off an alarm. You can have a Bluetooth uh, function where it can actually send you a Bluetooth signal to your to your phone on how the, your your battery is performing. So the BMS is really critical. But then also the wiring from your BMS, which could be a really good part. And uh, and but how does that connect to all your cells? Because what that's doing is it's really reading the the uh, the balancing of your cells and that just that plug connection is critical how that is sealed is critical all these wires connected to all your different battery packs all your different battery cells are, are is critical so when you when you put the entire package together people ask well do you do you use a really quality cell? And of course, you, you should in insist on that. But then you, sh then you should look at the whole entire battery pack. Then the one of the things is once your battery pack is made perfectly, what is actually connected to that battery pack? And I brought along what is connected to these, these plugs over here. So one, of course, is which, which is a critical part, is your controller. So really, this is your power. And then and, and measured sort of in volts and amp hours, and then this is your controller, which is which is really sort of rated in, in amps. And that plug is now plugged into your battery. Now, if that plug and the plug to your battery are plugged in, and they are not, and there's no diode, which basically would mean that the the energy from your battery is constantly being drained by your controller. Well, that's what's going to happen is your battery is going to lose charge over time. So ensure that the, that the circuitry between your battery and your, and your controller is correct. Um, not only that, but you've got external plugs, for instance, and one of those plugs is actually your charging plug. So of course you've got your discharge, which is your controller, and you've got your charging plug which is one of these. Now the, the charging plug, you can just say, oh, do you have a charging plug? And people say yes or no. Well, the charging plug is, as well would have an impact. The, you, you, you can, any, any outflow of, of power going to your discharge or going to your charge can actually slowly but surely drain your battery if there's no control over that flow of energy. Uh, when you look at the plug, one of the key things I just wanted to mention is your charging plug can either have one one pin or like this one over here it's got three pins we only use three pins for our external charges now the three pins are really helpful because once you plug that into your battery pack it it actually makes a far better connection than just that one pin and that one pin if it moves around toggles around can cause friction can cause heat and then can cause problems for your battery so when you talk about battery um, losing charge and battery health and you know how you're going to look after your battery, the first thing of course is ensure that it has a, you do have a really quality uh, battery pack uh, manufacturer, the battery cell manufacturer, the way that the battery pack has been assembled, when you've spec'd all the specific plugs, and then also of course your discharge and your charging on that battery. The other the other points of course is how do you use your battery now. Like anything else, if you just push full throttle or you just hammer the, the product that you're using, of course, you're not, it's not going to last as long. So depending on how your utilization of the battery is, that's also give you longevity. The, the losing of the charge can happen is if you, if you race through your, your ride, you leave your battery uh, without being charged. The, 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 the lithium has already been discharged. 
now it can actually charge the last bit of the the last bit of the uh, of the charge of the battery loses the last bit of, of energy in the battery loses charge the most. So really, what you want to do is you want to plug your battery in after your ride. Basically, with our batteries, any time after you've ridden, plug your battery in, and you can leave that plug. You can leave your battery plugged in on, into the charger for you know days on end and sometimes weeks on end. If you're going away for a long time, we suggest you fully charge your battery and then unplug it. But make sure it's fully charged whenever you leave. Because even though you might have diodes and you might have certain ways of, of, of controlling the withdrawal of, uh, and the discharge of your battery, over time, the, uh, the, the lithium battery will actually end up losing charge. And if it loses enough charge, you won't be able to charge it up again. So we suggest every three months, Make sure that you go up to your lithium battery, plug the charger in. If it's been sitting idle every three months, go up to your battery, charge it, make sure it's fully charged, and then monitor it so that it doesn't sit idle for much longer than three months at a time. I hope this helps. Uh, battery technology is obviously improving daily. Uh, all the components are improving daily. The, the construction and the, 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 the packing of these uh, of the battery packs are improving, and the way that all the components are being attached to us is improving. We are because we manufacture um, and and we and we build and we focus on every single part of our bike. We make sure that we inspect the battery packs, we inspect the battery cells, we inspect the way that they have been assembled. The critical part is not only the discharging, which is when you're riding, is discharging, but also when you're charging the battery. How's that charging done? We use a CCCV charger, which is a constantly, uh, we will use a constant current to charge your battery until it gets almost full, and then it'll use constant voltage just to top it off. If you, if you, you know, an analogy is really a bunch of different cells, a bunch of different test tubes are all in a row, those will be your cells, and if you had to fill it up with water, you can quite easily fill it up with water fast right in the beginning, but near the end, if you want to top it off, you have to slow down and you sort of have to trickle charge it. And those type of charges are a little bit more expensive, there's a little bit more technology in there, but it's critical that your battery has that so that you can keep your battery cells charged and balanced and, and not creating too much heat, which will then obviously hurt your battery over time. Hopefully that helps. That's, uh, you know, look after your battery. Any questions, obviously we can answer it online. We've got our live chat and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.